Welcome to WorshipTeamTraining.com. This is the Worship Team Training Podcast with your host and training director, Brandon Dempsey. Welcome back, everyone, to our video podcast with worship leader and recording artist, Brian Moss. Brian is worship and music coordinator for Regent College in Vancouver, British Columbia, and has toured and recorded with Michael Card, Jeff Johnson, and others. Brian will share his heart for authentic worship leading and the many changes and generational shifts within the church. This video is coming to you from a retreat center called Laity Lodge in the beautiful hill country of Kerrville, Texas. Watch more of our broadcast for more great sites from Laity Lodge, plus info on an upcoming worship team training retreat for worship leaders. We're here with Brian Moss, new friend, and uh, welcome again to the Worship Team Training video podcast, and we're glad that you're with us, and we're, we're getting to know Brian and to hear his heart. So Brian, tell us now, you've been leading worship for 10 years, and tell us a little bit about your upbringing and where you're from and all that stuff. Well, I grew up in a small town in Iowa, and in the, the Reformed tr- tradition, and my uh, church upbringing was was in the Reformed Church, and uh, go to church mm-hmm. twice a Sunday in the morning and the evening, wow. and it was very much um, religion was very much part of um, mm-hmm. the cultural identity of the space and place where I grew up. Mm-hmm. Um, very traditional hymns. Uh, Depending on the week, it's generally one of my aunts playing the organ. And I grew up with hymns, and yeah. I actually uh, started learning to read from a hymnal where my hmm. where uh, my dad would just kind of follow along the notes and the words as we'd go through. And, right. and so I kind of learned to read music and, and read words at the same time through hymns. Hmm. So, uh, but it was it was pretty traditional. And then by the time I got to uh, into junior high and high school, started experimenting with some different things, key, uh, with keyboards, and and had a band with some friends, and you know we uh, just uh, made music together and, and, and tried branching out and doing things less boring, right? And <laughs> yeah, so then uh, from there I went on into college and ended up in Nashville uh, and did some work there with. Uh, the Indelible Grace Group uh, with Kevin Twitt, and which was taking these old hymn texts mm. and putting new melodies to it. Mm. And so this uh, probably got started doing that about 13, 14 years ago, mm. uh, wow. and doing some work of of uh, writing new tunes uh, for for some hymns. And so in that way, it was neat because it was able to bring together. Uh, these words, some that I had been familiar with, but in mm. kind of a new expression. Right. I went and worked uh, in Nashville with Michael Card for right. uh, a couple of years and was able to do some musical things with him mm. and then awesome. ended up at a church in, a Presbyterian church in Seattle uh, just, well, almost nine years ago. Mm. And I was there, and I just recently uh, left the church there to go study at Regent College, and I'm also mm. working there as worship and music oh, cool. coordinator. Before that, in your college, you also went to Belmont, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's my, de- my degree is my degree's from uh, Belmont in uh, music performance and commercial music and music business. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. The right city for the right occasion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Last night, we talked a lot about worship and its authenticity, its sincerity, and leading congregations, and you and I talked a lot about music and different worship leaders and our approach to congregations, our approach to leading music. How do you see everything in the, the times that we're in today, and what, what's been on your heart recently? I think there's there's still a lot of talk about, surprisingly, I think, about traditional and contemporary, mm-hmm. and where most of what I've seen, that's really not... It really has not been as much of an issue because I think most places, most churches have come to a place where either they've abandoned one for the other or they've tried to do a mixture of both or they've tried to have some of each or some of everything at different times. I would say I've been a, a little bit discouraged 
uh, by that because, well, not that the, that the uh, worship wars are ending necessarily because they're never going away. Right. Uh, but I guess what I what I mean, I've been just a little bit discouraged by the way we've kind of just thrown off multi generational worship gatherings um, for the sake of doing something that is uh, well always our language our response mm-hmm. Psalm 145 the fourth verse it speaks of one generation commending the works of God to the to the next or mm-hmm. to the other right. and it's not necessarily about an older generation speaking to a younger generation I think there also be a younger generation speaking to an older generation and that can't happen if we're not together. Mm-hmm. So it's, mm-hmm. it's been difficult. Uh, the, the church I was at in uh, Seattle, we, we had a wide variety of musical styles and um, would worship in, I guess, what some people would call convergent uh, kind of setting. Yeah, did it, did it work well with the congregation? Did they understand? Yeah, it did. That? I think part of what the challenge was at first, there was just so much frustration over what we were trying to do, pull from all these different sources. Uh, you know, the, a lot of the older generation was confused, I think, by me because, you know, I would do all these new songs with a band and just loud and boisterous, and yet, you know, my wife and I would subscribe to go to the opera, you know, and, well, you can't like, you can't like both. You can't, Bach, Bach can't be your favorite composer because you are the rock and the roll, roll guy, guy right. and we want to peg you in as that. Right. And I'm kind of overstating it here. This is not sure. everybody. Interesting journey uh, trying to do all these things. But, you know, there was moments where it was just beautiful, where uh, not long, I hadn't been there very long, and there was an Easter Sunday where the beginning of the service, the organ was blaring, Christ the Lord has risen today. And there was a row of high school students and they were just really singing this hymn. Then towards the end of the service, we had the band going on the same service. You know, band blaring, did you feel the mountains tremble? And there's this 80-year-old couple, you know, with hands in the air singing really? this delirious song. Wow. And so that was so encouraging, uh, so encouraging to see that this is possible. So, so do you think that the older generations who have really been distancing themselves from contemporary music or because you know truthfully speaking there's there's been things done well and not done so well so do you think perception in the church has been changing in regards to styles of music i don't know if perception has been changing but i also wouldn't say that the older generation is necessarily trying to distance themselves because i think a lot of the people at the church i was at who you know were the most excited about what i was doing were were um some of the people from the older generation, and it just was exciting for them to see new life. And I think I had a conversation uh, a couple, couple weeks ago with an uh, older couple. They were trying to learn uh, these new songs, but they were struggling stylistically with, with how to do so. We're just not used to this musical language, and how can we learn it? And there's really no way for us to do that. And, you know, and I think in those kind of situations, if you're in that kind of setting, it might be helpful to try to print out sheet music for someone who that's the language they read. You know, I think we have to we have to be flexible, and it's going to be awkward and, and gaudy at times. But you know, I think that just trying to make it this slick production all the time yeah. is um, what can just be so detrimental and mm-hmm. and not God honoring. You know, and and the more we keep separating the generations. I just don't think it's, yeah. there's nothing, it's, there's no biblical model that supports that. No, there isn't. And so, um, it's a difficult work mm. to try to worship together, and, and messy from time to time, but when it starts to happen, it's so rich.